Hey guys, good morning. Okay, um, I hope you guys are doing great. Uh, I've had a um, break, yeah, a break from you, and it's important. Uh, it was important for me just to recenter myself to know exactly what I want to share, who I want to be authentically. So, um, it's actually the middle of the night as I'm recording this. I've had a sleepless night and um, I know it's urgent because the spiritual changes that we're going to have, we're having already in this 2021, um, more people are going to open up. More gifts are going to be uh, discovered. So if you don't know what's blocking your gift, you might, you know, live a, a life full of, tr of stress and um, not understanding why. So I'm just going to take my example. You know, I went through um, on and off. Yeah. Good morning. I didn't know you were going to be awake. So good morning. I went on and off, I went through some spiritual changes and um, during my journey, I always kind of felt or knew that I have some gifts, but I think in 2014, that's when mine started showing up, like I could, you know, when you say you have a gift of prophecy, I could prophesy sometimes and 99% of the time it would come true. And um, what else? You know, I'll have this sixth sense. When I see somebody that's fake, I'll just know. You know, I'll just sense it. And when when my gifts opened, I was in a Christian setting. Because it might happen and it finds you being in a Muslim setting or, you know, you're just an atheist. You have to understand that. What matters and will trigger your spiritual gifts is actually you being true wherever you are. So, um, because being a Christian, I used to, I used to, because Christians, you know that when we the gospel is being preached to us, uh, it's like we are better than everybody else. We shouldn't mingle with anybody. So it it kind of makes us to believe that we are the chosen, like the only one on the planet. That will go to heaven and um, when I left Christianity and then I came back when I left I I kind of explored I kind of I was like Jesus I, so you're gonna send all these people to hell like you know what just explain this to me so it just allowed me to explore other options and that's because I was I served truthfully, genuinely. You know, there's a scripture in John chapter 14, verse 21, where Jesus says, if you do what I say, if you obey, if you love me, you do what I say. And if you do what I say, I will come and reveal myself to you. So even going to church, I will see pastors. You know, sometimes the pastor, when he's on the pulpit, he will preach something. And then when he comes down, he's not preaching the same thing. And... I used to confuse, like I was confused between the human, that is the human being and the spirit speaking through the human being when he's preaching. So when the Holy Spirit is, when, whenever he's speaking, listen to the, per, to the message that is for you. And I've had a hard time with that because I used to think, okay, if he's preaching this, everything in his life has to match that. So I was missing the message. So, 2014, my gift started opening. Uh, for two years, I really was, you know, diving into that. And 2016, I had a hard break in the church. I left the, the church. So when I left, I explored all the things. My gift started, I mean, continued to open. And I was thinking, oh, if I'm not in church anymore, my gift will disappear. So I will share with you... Uh, three or four things that will block your gift <clears throat> and this is from my personal experience and some researches because I will say I have 
this is my seventh year of experience in the spirit realm that I've been on and off working, you know, doing some spiritual work. And it's, it's more than a calling. It's just, it's something that has passionate me for years, even before I, I knew what it is. And I'm still learning, I'm still growing, I'm still discovering, I'm still un un uncovering and unpacking stuff. So the first thing that may block your spiritual gift, it's not being you, okay? Let's say, when I say not being you, maybe you, you live with a guy or you're married to somebody and, you know, when you go out, you're with your friends, you're happy, you're, yeah, you're smiling. And then when you come home, as soon as you see him, you switch, you know, you just switch. You become something else or somebody else. That's you not being with your, uh, uh, not being uh, uh, um, your authentic self. So we have, at every moment, we have two personalities. I can be who my, my mother wants me to be, my father wants me to be, my friends, my clients, my followers. Do you know that followers can influence you, actually? How many times have people told me, oh, you shouldn't dress like that, you shouldn't wear your hair like that, you shouldn't... So, you can be influenced by even your followers. So, it's a, for me, it has always been a journey, a fight, in order to be my true self. Like, if I feel like wearing my hair like this, I'm wearing them. If I feel like having a wig, I'm having the wig. It's not because you told me or because you're out here, I like the wig, no but because I feel like having it. So when you are, you're not being your authentic self, like I remember there was this time of this period of my life where I was considering um, getting married to somebody that was gonna offer me financial security. And the, the matter of the fact with the person is that the person was so involved or too, when I was with the person, I could put on a mask. Literally, the moment I speak to the person, I could see myself taking off um, the me mask, like taking it off and putting the new one to please the person, to fit in his game. And if you don't understand these things, you will end up um, trying to please again and again again and again like i still remember there was another time uh you know i had some uh, mentors you know you can have a mentor somebody will be like okay let me mentor you let let me teach you how it's supposed to be so i've had mentors that i remember this particular one every time i was online and he comes up I feel frustrated because there was an expectation. There was a way he expected me to go. So I wasn't allowed to be my authentic self. So that's one of the things that block your gifts because you, we all have gifts. Okay. You're listening to me. You have gifts in you. And it's not like uh, I'm, the, I'm, I'm so special. I just chose willingly. Sometimes circumstances will push you, but willingly I chose to go in a certain way and give up on some, some mundane things, even papers. How many times have you been chasing papers and they told you in order to have this situation, you need to, um, you need to, you know, stop behaving this way or you need to lie lie so we can give you this status so you put on a mask and you start lying you lie about your age you lie about where you come from your country of origin you lie about the father of your baby you lie about certain things because you want to get something from them and sometimes it goes for 10 years you have to live in 10 years of a lie so those are the things that block your gifts so it, it literally blocks you and you cannot be your real self. That's why you can see some people, maybe they, they live in that world. Let's say they live in Europe and uh, they've lied to be there or they stole to be there. 
and now they have a status they are doctor they are all they they, they have to pro to go through prostitution and lies in order to get money and pay for some uh, trainings now they are a nurse but that life they're not happy inside that life because they have to show to their family I've been, look at my certificate look at my car look at my house look my my children they have a red passport and have a black passport because uk they changed the passport it's black now so you find yourself putting a mask that will block your gifts okay right the second thing that will block your gift it's not speaking your truth so it's it's kind of linked to the first one because the first one i say just accepting just being a compromise you know being in another environment that will allow you to blossom the second one is not speaking your truth so you might be you hear like these kind of videos i've been urging and itching to do them but then when i start doing them i feel like oh maybe some people are not gonna like it or maybe but as i do this i'm happy as i do these videos looking the way i'm looking this is me like i'm totally aligned with me right now and i'm speaking my truth i remember there are some people that when uh, in 2016 i have a friend and uh, she's in the u.s she knew me when i was a christian and then when i in 2016 i came out of christianity so i started doing a live video like this and just being like okay when i was a christian and she's like oh so you're not a christian anymore so what's happening and i was like why are you checking me literally sometimes you get rid of the weight or the burden of your mother and your father but then some people can come and be a burden on you so that can hinder your gifts that will make you to you know your gift will, not, will just die because i'm an infinite being okay i am an infinite being you are too but it's you will accept and know it to the extent you allow yourself i can block myself and i say no 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 and i start pretending and i go and do certain things or i don't speak i speak what people want to hear i say what people want to hear i don't speak my truth because um, when jesus was on the mountain he said he started preaching in john chapter 6 he said except a man eats my flesh and drinks my blood he has no part in me he had like 70 70 disciples they're like what no 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 no, no. this is a hard message for us let us unfollow you jesus let us unblock from you jesus let us go from you jesus and then he was left with 12. Because he had to speak his truth. He had to speak, not caring who was listening, who was following or not. The, the third thing that can block your spiritual gift, it's when you're too rigid. Okay? You're too rigid, you're too fixed on certain things. Let's say I pay for a course and I learn how to be online, how to run your Facebook page so you have a hundred thousand followers in, in in one month. That is a rigid course. They say you have to do this, do this, and do that. I start doing it. And at some point, I feel like I should do this way, but I don't. I'm just stuck in this. Have you ever met that kind of people? They are so rigid, they're so stuck. That can block your gift as well. When sometimes you know you're flowing, you get somewhere and you're just in the flow. You talk to people and everything's beautiful. It's beautiful. You don't even check the time. You're like, oh, it just it just flows. That opens your gift. Yeah. The last point that I'm gonna use. I think that blocks your gift it's how am, am I going to formulate this you know in number one I said 
when you're not being you. Number two, when you're not speaking your truth. Number three, when you're too serious. Okay? When you're too serious or you're holding too much onto rigidness. You know, you're just too stuck on certain things. I think I'm going to just just keep it like that. But it's, it's, it's important to understand that your gifts, even if you have a mentor, you have mentors, your gift will open up by you listening and obeying. Because I have a, a, I'm not going to call her a mentor really because I'm not following her rigidly. She, on and off, she would ask me questions and I would answer, but just mildly answer her. So, I remember she asked, she, she started having questions about Christianity. And what I noticed and, and I, I told her is that don't dwell in the talks. Don't dwell in the, what about this, what about that, what about, apply what you know. If you apply the 2% you know, it's better than somebody who knows 90% and does not apply them. I repeat myself. If you apply the 2% that you know, it's better than somebody who knows 90% and doesn't apply anything. This is how I'm going to talk about this in um, the next video. This is how your spirituality will grow. Whether you find yourself in a um, Buddhist circle or Islamic circle, Christian setting, whatever, you know, it will allow you to grow because you have practiced, you know, truth, love. You let yourself open. And I think the last thing that I would say that blocks your gift it's bad people around, allowing or compromising. You know, when you keep on accepting whatever, all of this has to do with you not bowing down to a certain environment, to certain people, to certain conditions. And when you bow down, it will numb you. It will numb your, 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 your gifts. And it will just stop you from receiving the lead. Because we are all led by our spirit guides. Call it Holy Spirit, call it Spirit Guide, call it Guardian Angel, whatever you want to call it. We are led by Him. And we are led as much as we obey. He will not show us the whole way. He will just show us one step. You obey that step and then the next step. You obey and then the next step and then the next step. That's how the journey unfolds. And then after 10 years, you are like, wow, I've acquired like I'm a master now. But there's still more than that. The more you know, the more you know that you don't know. Okay, so you can share this video and or tell me what is your own spiritual experience. How far are you? How far are you? And uh, how did you discover your gifts?